in this lesson, we need to normalize our model. Let's have a look at what I mean. On the Home tab of Power BI, if I click on Transform Data, this will reopen the Power Query Editor so that we can see the three queries we currently have, which is Sales Prep, Country, and Products. Now, Sales Prep is our transactional table, otherwise known as the fact table or the data table. This is our large 1.2 million rows of sales over these four years. Now you want to keep these tables as skinny as possible. They're going to be long, especially if you're successful, because we're going to have many sales. But we want as few columns as possible. Now looking at this table, we have a product location and country code columns. Now the country code column is not necessary. We don't want it in here because we have a location and we can find the country through the location. The product and the location, we do. However, I would like to use some index numbers there as a reference to the product and location and not the names of them. This will make our fact table fast to interrogate through our DAX formulas and our visualizations. So I want to create a location table. We don't have one at the moment. We have country, we have products, we don't have location. So in the queries pane on the left, I'm going to right mouse click on sales prep. And there is an option to reference this table. There is an option for duplicate and an option for reference. Both of them would work, but it would be better to reference this query because duplicate would duplicate all of those transformation steps plus the connection to the source folder that that query does. If I reference it, I get another query from that, but only one of them is connected to that source folder now with this new one, I'm going to immediately rename it by right mouse clicking again and renaming. And it's going to be called location. And you can see in the formula bar that the source is just a reference to the other query, equal sales prep. Now if we look at the data, we want this table to be about location. So I'm going to select the location column and hold down control to select the country column and with them both selected I will right mouse click and remove other columns so that we are just left with the location and the country code. Now that we have this I want to remove the duplicates from location because at the moment we still have those 1.2 million odd rows. So with location selected on the home tab, there is a remove rows button. There's some really good options in that drop down. The one we want, remove duplicates, will strip out all the duplicate mentions of a location, leaving us with our 48 locations. Now that we have that, I want to select the country code column so that next to remove rows, I can sort the country code in ascending order, giving us Australia and Austria at the top. Now the location names in this example are unique. There's no duplications, although that is something that can happen. There are towns and cities across the world which, are, which share the same name. Here they are unique, but it's good practice to have an index number as a unique identifier. Often your data will already have this index. It will have an employee number or a product code. That's typically generated by a system. Here we don't have that, so I'm going to click on the Add Column tab 
and then the drop down arrow for index column so that I can insert an index column starting from one. That will include it at the end of our data set. Here it is. So my next step is to click and drag it to the start because it's always nice to have your key filled as the first column. I'm going to change its name, the header, to location ID as a more creative name than index. And then our final step really is just to double check those data types like we do. So the first data type is a decimal number. Now these are whole numbers. So I'm going to click on that and change its whole number. And then location and country code are text data types, which is great. So all of these steps, just like the previous queries have been added in applied steps on the right. So if we ever refresh this data, the data will come in from the files in that folder into sales prep, transformations happen, and then this query is linked to that one so that then this table is generated. So now we have our location table. Let's click on home and then close and apply to load it into the Power BI model. And there it is in the fields list on the right hand side. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.